A lot of people have problems solving uh, complex simultaneous equations, uh, and those exact same people have no problem solving non-complex simultaneous equations. And yet, in actual fact, they're relatively similar in, uh, in how we plan to attack them and solve them. If we had, uh, I mean, this is a complex uh, equation where Z and W are both uh, complex numbers. But if we just, for example, had a, a linear equation where we had, uh, I don't know, C plus 2D equals 4 and C minus 3D equals 6 or whatever, um, it would be relatively easy to solve this. What we would do is we would make either C or D the subject of the equation in one of the equations, probably this one, and then we would substitute that value into the other equation solve for C or D and then plug either C or D the answer into the other equation and we have our answer. If the system of equations, uh, linear equations, is, uh, is, is a simple one like this, there is one solution. If it's a slightly more complex one, for example, AB plus 2 equals 4 uh, and A plus B equals 3, for example, um, because we have A multiplied by B here, then uh, we would expect there to be uh, two solutions. Um, but it's still relatively straightforward and the plan is still exactly the same uh, that we isolate one and then plug that into the other. And this is what we're going to do here. So we have uh, two um, complex uh, variables that we have to find. We have to find W and we have to find Z. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to uh, isolate one and then plug that value uh, into the other one. Um, the only thing is, is that we have um, a slight complication here because we have the conjugate of W. Um, but in actual, we'll deal with that uh, as we go along. So let's call this equation 1 and let's call this equation 2. So what we're going to do is we are going to make W the subject of equation 2 and then we're going to plug W into equation 1. But first of all, we're going to have to do a little bit of jiggery-pokery to get W into W conjugate. Okay, so we have uh, from equation 2, uh, 2W add 3Z equals 11 i.e. w equals 11 minus 3z over 2. Now, if we look at equation 1, we don't actually have w there, we have w conjugate. But given, if we look at um, what we have here, this is real, this is real. The only complex uh, variable on this side is z, and the only complex variable on this side is w. And so therefore, the conjugate of w will be equal to 11 minus 3 times the conjugate of z over 2. The reason being that they are the only two parts of this equation which have imaginary parts. So we can therefore stay, state that w conjugate is 11 minus 3 z conjugate over 2 and we can now push that into equation 1 here which will give us an equation in z and z conjugate. Okay, so let's do that now. Um, so equation 1 uh, just as a reminder, is uh, Z W conjugate add 2Z equals 15I. And we are now going to place W conjugate in here. So that gives us Z brackets 11 minus 3Z conjugate over 2 add 2Z equals 15I. OK, so let's just expand this bracket. And that gives us 11Z over 2. Oops, sorry, we don't need the equals there. That gives us 11Z over 2 um, minus 3z z conjugate over 2 add 2z equals 15i. Now just uh, let's have a look at z z conjugate. z z conjugate is actually the modulus of z squared uh, for those who, who don't believe. Let's, let's call z equals a plus ib then z conjugate is a minus ib and when we multiply those two together z z conjugate we would get a plus ib a minus ib which by the difference of two squares is a squared uh, b squared so therefore uh, z z conjugate is the modulus squared this is the modulus of z squared okay so um, we can write in here that now we have 11 z over 2 minus 3 mod z squared over 2 the modulus of z squared add 2z equals 15i now we have one equation um, one unknown z being a complex number we can now write z as a plus ib z equals a plus ib and we can put in a plus ib into this equation and then we solve we compare the real and the imaginary to get the values of a plus a and b and then finally once we have the a and b we can plonk it into either equation 1 or 2 and find W. 
Okay, so we now have, uh, actually let's just, um, before we do that, let's just tidy up this equation slightly. So we've got uh, 11z over two add two z, that gives us 15z over two minus three mod z squared over two equals 15i, okay. And we know that z equals a plus ib and we wanna find a and b. Okay, so we have um, 15, a plus IB over 2 minus 3. Now the modulus of Z squared is A squared plus B squared, which is a real uh, value. There's no uh, imaginary value there at all. Equals 15I. Now comparing the imaginaries, the only imaginaries we have on this side is 15I and on this side is 15 over 2 IB. And so therefore we can say, looking at the imaginaries, that we have 15 over 2b equals 15, i.e. b equals uh, 2. And now if we compare the reals, let's have a look at the reals, we have 15a over 2 minus 3a squared and b squared over 2 equals 0. But we know that b is 2, we've just worked that out, so we can put that into there here, add, nine, add 4. Okay, um, and now we need to solve this equation here, um, where we have, uh, let's multiply both sides by uh, everything by 2, so that's 15a minus 3a squared minus 12 equals 0, just expanding out this, i.e. 3a squared minus 15a add 12 equals 0. Um, and if we uh, can now divide by 3, so that gives us a squared minus 5a add uh, 4 equals 0. So therefore, a minus 4, a minus 1 equals 0. So we have a equals 4 or a equals 1. Okay, so now we know, uh, just having a look, we, we know what b is. And we now know that there are two possible values for a, so we now know that z can take the value either 4 plus 2i or 1 plus 2i. Okay, and now all we need to do is put either uh, both of these values into either equation 1 or 2. And let's just uh, have a quick look at uh, whichever the one is the easiest equation. The easiest equation is probably... Uh, W equals 11 minus 3z over 2. So let's just write that again down here. W equals 11 minus 3z over 2. So if we put in here z equals 4 plus 2i, that gives us W equals 11 minus 3 times 4 plus 2i over 2, which would be uh, minus a half um, minus 3i. Okay, so if z is 4 plus 2i, then w is minus a half minus 3i. And if z is 1 plus 2i, then we just put w equals 11 minus 3 brackets 1 plus 2i over 2, which would give us uh, hang on, 11 minus 8, uh, 4 minus 3i. So basically, we now have our two solutions to the simultaneous equation, which are z equals 4 plus 2i and w equals minus half minus 3i, or z equals 1 plus 2i and w equals 4 minus 3i. Now, there is a, a brute force way of doing this, and if you really are stuck on a simultaneous complex equation uh, um, in an exam, you, you can do this. If you really don't know where to go, you could basically write at the beginning here, you could let this, I don't recommend this by the way, but you could let Z equal A plus IB and you could let W equal C plus ID. And then you could put those values into these two equations, which would mean that you would have two equations with four unknowns, A, B, C and D. But because you could compare reals and you could compare imaginaries, you would actually have four equations and four unknowns. But the equations, the four equations that you get when you do this are relatively complicated, and it's probably far more difficult to then solve the four equations that you get here than it is to solve the simultaneous complex equations in the first place. Okay, so I wouldn't recommend that method, although if in an exam you really have absolutely no idea where to go, you would at least get two or three of, a, of a, say, a five or six mark for doing this 
getting the four equations and then giving up or guessing.